Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. I've had a lot of questions about this disc sander after my last couple videos, so I want to give you guys a tour of it. Because it's actually kind of a great thing to have an 18 inch disc sander. So let's um, start at the base, I guess. The base on here is from an old plow, and I love these discs because they're very stable. They're actually a hard steel, but they're easy to weld to. And a welded to that is about a four and a half inch pipe. Now I'll say that I wouldn't go with a four and a half inch pipe. I would try to get something in the five to six inch range. The reason is this post seems to have a harmonic vibration to it when this is winding down. So I'd like to alleviate that. Now something I can do is I can fill that up with sand, pack it down, and maybe that would take care of the problem. And I'll probably do that someday. On the back side you can see there's a set of bearings. They're actually wheels and I can easily lift and move this machine around the shop because that was something I really wanted to have the access to. Now you'll also notice that when I built this handle, believe it or not, I didn't do this on mistake. I did it because I did it on another stand almost identical to this one for my vise where I accidentally had it swinging out just too far. But I found out it works out really good because it's easy to get to instead of having it lay flush. Now here you see these two vertical supports. That allows the table to tilt down to a 45 degree. I actually built this for a particular project that I needed to do some very detailed work on. And I wanted to make sure that I had as much support under this table as possible because the items I'm going to be working on are about four feet long. And I thought if I designed a trunnion system, which we're more accustomed to, that it may not have the strength that I wanted. Plus, building a trunnion is kind of complicated and it has to work perfect. This, I thought, was just a great solution. Now coming up to the table, the table is 24 by 12 and it's about, I think it was 38 inches off the ground when I measured it. And it's just a simple piece, I think, of 3 8 inch steel. I'd like to go with something a little different next time, but this is what I had laying around. The other thing is the table's bolted right here with four bolts and they're slotted so I can move this in closer and closer to the table to make sure that I have almost zero gap there, which is a great way of what I want to say. It's safer, it's easier, all that great stuff. Also, when I tilt the table, because it's not on a trunnion, I'm not able to keep the center line pivoting right at that exact point. So this allows me to move it forward and adjust that gap no matter what angle I have the table. Now something you don't see on this that I'm still working on is there will be a protective shroud that comes around here. Part of that's to protect me, part of it is for the vacuum system, and the third part is to protect the motor because the motor is actually open air motor and is not sealed, which would be nice. But when you're given a motor, you just take it and be happy. Now this is a repulsion induction motor, and it's a one horse. What's great about a motor like this is it's actually, if you were to compare it to an induction motor, this thing would come out to probably three horses where a uh, induction motor only comes out to one horse. The difference between an induction motor and a repulsion induction motor is the way the armature is pushed around or pulled around in this situation. So in an induction motor, you have an electrical field around the outside and it rotates around and it rotates the inner armature. Well, this type of repulsion induction motor actually pushes that armature around. So instead of, you know, how two magnets, you try to push them together and they don't work together. Well, that's the way this works where an induction motor, you try to run a magnet by another one and pull it, it doesn't work as well. So that's why you get so much more horsepower out of these. Now, the other way of thinking about it is think of hand tools, power tools. They have brushes in them because you can make a very small motor with a lot of torque. So 
I think this is a great advantage, especially spinning this 18 inch disc. Now the other part is, this disc, you know, I did a whole video series, I think I did three videos on this disc about getting it trued up, but I did get this disc from another machine. I think it was homemade, I'm not sure. There was a lot of other work I had to do to it, but at the end, it works out really well. The base here may look like it's one inch thick, but really it's about quarter inch plate, and I just welded a piece of trim around it to thicken it up to add some more stability to it. It has a simple toggle switch on the side to turn it on and off, and I think that's kind of the tour. Now, actually, let me back up here a minute. The reason I built this disc sander was to do one particular project. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to keep the disc sander after the project is done. It's just I had a project, or have. So I've been working on this one here. This is a sheet metal frame, and it's for photographs. And I've got this old collection of car images rusting away in the desert. And I thought the best way to complement those images was with some sort of steel frame. And I'll actually eventually do a whole video on how this shape is made. But the trick here is this corner has to be TIG welded. It doesn't have to be, but that's the way I want to do it. And it's hard to get a 45 degree angle on just a piece of sheet metal. So what my goal is, is to set up a jig to where I can push this into the sander, not only get a perfect 45 degree angle, but get it perfect at all angles. So when I need to fit up these pieces for welding, it's going to be seamless, hopefully. I'm just going to be able to go in and TIG weld it very clean. So that's why I actually built the disc sander, but I also know that I'm going to use it for a lot of other projects. Well, you guys, just done with another video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me some thumbs up. Also, if you have any of your comments, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave them in a positive way if they kind of go a little south. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Uh -huh.